as we invite Bishop Harry Jackson to come up and to give his statement and to close out for your questions, I'd like to point out that we've brought for you two open letters today. One to President Obama, which is the first document in your packet. And then the last document in your packet is from a group of African American leaders and other pro-life leaders who have, from every political party and every ethnic group, and we all agree that, as has been so eloquently stated, women's reproductive rights should not include abortion, but procreative reproductive rights should ensure that the woman is very healthy all of her life, should she ever decide to be a mother. Uh, Bishop Jackson, would you please give a statement, and then we will open up for questions. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I want to thank Alveda King for her leadership, and Dean Gardner, Dean Nelson, and others here who uh, are carrying a torch. It's very important. I need to make a statement that's a little bit controversial. I believe that this health care plan that's being presented as it now stands is grossly immoral. It's absolutely ungodly for a number of reasons. So let's start with why it's ungodly. First, there is a sense that we're going to have to open up this health care system and lower or denigrate the level of care that people will get in America today. Three years ago, I was diagnosed as having cancer of the esophagus. The doctor said I had 15% chance of living. If I had been denied or delayed service for as short as three months, I wouldn't be standing here today. So there's something wrong with a system that says this, that the least of these has to be served. We don't care what happens to other sick people. The last time I checked, as I looked at the scripture, Matthew 25, it says that you visit the sick and the poor, and it's not just the rich sick or the poor sick, it's the sick. So if I'm going to have to lessen the care of some folks, and people who are, are, are worthy of service, worthy of care, don't get served, we have a major problem. In other words, I'm, my life is not worth less because I'm worth more financially. You're going to have to fix that. That means you're going to have to come up with the details. There's an assumption that if you live in a certain zip code, you can have other options. If you live in a certain zip code, you've got money to take care of whatever health needs that you have. That simply isn't true. So there's a problem. There's a reverse classism in this whole issue. Second, I want to say is, we deal specifically with the issue of abortion. It's absolutely immoral to say that you're going to pay for an abortion. In Washington, D.C., 41% of all the pregnancies that, is, uh, that are happening in this city are terminated by abortion. If what the statisticians say is correct, and abortion that is paid for by the government increases the number of abortions, what it would come down to is one out of every two pregnancies in this city would be terminated by abortion. So we could just count it off. Would you mind? You abort, you don't. You abort, you don't. You abort, you don't. You abort, you don't. That would be the situation in this city that you're living in. Let me add a racial dimension to it about abortion. In this city, 75% of the people who abort their babies are black. Therefore, it is absolutely racist as well. Think about it this way. Three out of four babies. So black, 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 white, black, 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 Hispanic, black, 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 white, black, 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 Asian. That's the way this thing is going to go down. So don't tell me that this is moral or it's fair. It is genocidal in its impact, and it will have a, a decimating effect on the whole nation and on this city. Last but not least, and then we'll turn it back over to Alveda King. The third reason I think that this is immoral doesn't have to do with the euthanasia or other things. It has to do, once again, with the issue of abortion. I was to have about 50 people or so who work for us, we provide health care, and under this particular system, uh, although we've got 200 kids in daycare, we've got all kind of great things happening, I would have to pay 
out of the tithes and offerings of church people who do not believe that taking a baby's life is right, I will have to pay for someone else's abortion. We are going to be forced to absolutely participate in a system that none of us on our staff or in our church think is right. I believe that this particular health care plan as it stands now is absolutely, patently, ungodly and evil. And I resent the fact that in recent days there's been an attempt to get quote unquote progressive ministers to come out and say, hey, it's okay, this thing should be supported. That is politics at its worst. So on this one, we hope that everything to do with this health care uh, program grinds to a slow halt and we sit down, take stock of our morality, look realistically at our problems, and make moral, godly, and life-oriented decisions in Jesus' name. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you.